Greetings everyone, today we'll be back with another installment of Anime Television History Tour and today we're going to be talking about yet another space themed British puppet series. I know we talked about some in the past like Fireball XL and such, but this time it's going to be something a bit different because it wasn't necessarily created by Gary Anderson, or Jerry Anderson, however you want to pronounce it. This was actually inspired by Mr. Anderson's work. The show that was re... That was re... Uh, retitled because of a similar show that was airing in the U.S. when the rights to air it here were being tossed around. But we'll get to that. Today we're going to be talking about the show known as Space Patrol. Now, the series that is known as Space Patrol was actually renamed when it was time to air it here in the U.S. You see, there was a show of the same name that came around the 1950s, a live action series called Space Patrol. So when the, sh when the show's creators agreed to air it here in the U.S., they decided to change the name from Space Patrol to Planet Patrol. It's kind of interesting. But what's even more interesting is that even though Jerry Anderson wasn't responsible for this, it uses the same super marionation technique. Meaning that the mouths of the marionettes, or the puppets, would move in sync with the dialogue track. Now, the series is set in the year 2100. About 80 years from now, for those of us living in 2020, and at which time, the indigenous and autonomous civilizations of Earth, Mars, and Venus have banded together to form the Yugo, or United Galactic Organization. The Space Patrol is Yugo's military wing, and this series follows the actions of this interplanetary force, mostly focusing on missions of a tiny unit led by the heroic, heroic bearded captain, Larry Dart. The humanoids in, in this crew consists of the elfin Slim from the planet Venus, and the stocky, ravenously sausage-man sausage Husky from the red planet we know as Mars. Now, of course, the imperfect Slavic accent variants and the six-point star chest emblems of these who may be a sly nod to the Jewish-Russian heritage of the English series creator-slash-writer but that hasn't really been confirmed, so I can't really ex exactly confirm whether that's really true or not. But how was this show created? Now, the series was created by one Roberta Lay, and it was and it was sh and it w was filmed in converted church buildings in Stoke Newington and Harlesden, London. The production was completed in about two blocks, consisting of 26 and 13 episodes, respectively, which are considered the first and second season, or, uh, pardon, series, because over in England, they call seasons of television shows series, or they used to, or still do, I'm not sure. Anyway, the final 13 episodes employed refurbished puppets, remade sets, and are also copyrighted with a 1962 Wonderama Productions logo around the credits. Now, various puppets from this series were reused in later Roberta Lay productions, like Wonder Boy and Tiger and Send for Dithers. Now, these were color films, and they actually reveal the fa fact that Gabble Gabbler Dictum was bright pink. Of course, Gabbler Dictum might be part of the show. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, when this show aired in the U.S., it was when it was sold overseas and broadcast not just here in the U.S., but also in Canada and Australia as well, in spite of the very low budget, which meant that sometimes the shadow of, of a puppet could be seen behind a TV screen before the communication device was supposedly turned on in an episode of the show, but when the show aired here in the U.S., 
it rated pretty strongly with younger audiences in many regions, and that included New York City. Plus, it, gathered, it garnered a, a huge following. And of course, even the creator of Babylon 5, one J. Michael Strakinsky, said that it was his favorite TV show growing up as a child. Now, of course, there are about 39 episodes total across three series. So that means about three seasons worth with 13 episodes each. Now, personally, I've only seen at least one episode of Space Patrol, and it dealt with, I believe, as far as I'm aware, where Husky turning invisible for some period of time. But all in all, I have to say, if you really like Jerry Anderson's work and you want to see what other productions were made, using Super Marionation, maybe you could give Space Patrol a try. But me personally, I'll just uh, give it a glance or two. Not exactly what I would put on a binge watch list, but definitely worth your time if you want to say that you want to say you've seen them all. Now with that out of the way, that wraps up another episode. Thanks so much for watching, and unfortunately we'll have to be skipping a few shows uh, when it comes to this specific year, 1963. Now the only shows that we will be talking about in the future will include The Mighty Hercules, Tennessee Tuxedo and His Tales, um, Ape Man, uh, Gigantor, I believe, and I think Mr. Piper, I believe. I'll can Consider that last one, Mr. Piper. But anyway, aside from those, also the only film from 1963 that we're going to be talking about here on my channel as part of Animation Cinema is going to be the 1963 Disney classic, The Sword in the Stone, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and until then, have a very merry and safe Christmas this year.